Hello everyone, it's Captain Sensible here with another quick mini review before Mr. Smenny's video. So today I'm going to be reviewing Aventus by Creed. Now uh, th this one uh, is uh, it was released in 1973 and the perfumer was Michael Portillo. Uh, this is a copy of Club de Nuit Intense Man by Armaf and uh, it, the notes in this one are pineapple, black currant, oak moss and children's tears. Now I quite like this one, uh, I've worn it a few times and I wore it, wore it the other night with uh, for a night out with my wife. And she, she quite liked it, and, and so did I. It projected quite well. Uh, unfortunately, the evening didn't go that well. I made a bit of a faux pas. We went to a, a restaurant, and uh, we sat down and uh, ordered a drink, and that, and, and then uh, my, my wife just nipped off to the bathroom. Uh, at meantime, along came the waitress, and she wanted to know if we were ready to order food. So I said, "Oh, I'm sorry, my, my wife just gone to the bathroom." Uh, so the, the waitress said, "No problem. Do you know what she's having?" So I said, "Well, it's been about ten minutes, so I assume it's a shit." Hello everyone, welcome back to all of you in the Smelly Army. So today we're going to do something slightly different and I'm going to look at five fragrances that I've got that got a four or five star rating out of five. In the recent release, Perfumes the Guide from Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez. This is the 2018 edition. It's the follow-up to the original 2008 book. Everything in this book is new. It's not the same book with some new ones added. It's all new, fresh fragrances that I think have been released since then or certainly weren't released, uh, weren't reviewed in the original book. Uh, there's a slightly leaning towards indie and niche houses in this one but there are some designer fragrances in there too quite a lot of really damning reviews in this book um, by the way there's a link to buy in the USA or the UK on Amazon kind of a must-have for perfume fans um, and yeah th there's some really mean reviews but there are some really good ones so if you'd like me to do another video on bad reviews in the book and maybe the original book too that could be fun let me know if that's of interest but I'll talk about five fragrances I've got that Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez gave really good marks to so let's get stuck in First of all then, uh, it's L'Envol de Cartier. I just have a travel spray of this one. It's quite a large travel spray, so it's enough to be getting on with. And this one got a really good review from them. It's a 2016 release. Let's just see what my notes say about this one. Uh, the perfumer was Mathilde Laurent, who also did Pamplelun from Guerlain, another one that Turin really rated in his original book. Uh, the notes on this, on base notes, are just list it's listed as musk, guyac wood, and honey. In the book, Tanya Sanchez gives it four stars out of five. Her two word little thing that, or two or three words that they put at the top of each line about the book is violet leaf woods. And indeed there is a bit of a violet leaf thing. It's a little bit like, or there's some reminiscence I think of Dior's Fahrenheit in this one. And certainly this very sweet, it smells like honey. It has a honey smell with a muskiness and a violet leaf element and a little bit of woodiness. And it's very well, nicely balanced, classy smelling and really really exquisite let's see more importantly than, than me waffling on about it what does tanya sanchez said say so uh, it's a brief review so i will read it all she says it's a delicious hybrid between a gentle cocoa dust woody oriental and a fruity cool water type fougere without any of the vile aggression or cheapness that mar most current examples of either genre a durable sleek wood and incense dry down of exquisite pallid grey beauty follows so good I think women should crash the stag party and wear it too as I've been doing so praise indeed I do like that one quite a lot and I'm going to continue working through my sample maybe I need a bottle lovely sweet honey and musk combination uh, but her description had some other ways of describing it that I wouldn't have thought of at all I didn't th see any reminiscence to cool water but hey that's uh, that's how it goes next up then this one really surprised me that it got a four star rating from Luca Turin it's Aventus from Creed. I thought he would be dismissive. He's normally not a massive Creed fan and he sort of implies that he thinks they're a bit overpriced and uh, he's not too keen on the, the historical stuff that they tend to go on about about the brand, um, some of which some people say can't really be proved. But Aventus gets a four star rating. It does, of course, have a nice combination of pineapple, apple, bergamot with vanilla, blackcurrant, patchouli, oak moss, jasmine, and of course Creed's famous ambergris in the base. So let's see what the big man himself, Luca Turin, says about this one. 
So he gives it four stars. Citrus fougere is his little short description at the top. Uh, the actual official definition is uh, fruity sheepra. So yeah, these uh, definitions never make any sense to me. Fougere, sheepra, I, I know some of what they mean, but they, they seem very debatable. He says it's a hugely successful masculine and it's been described to him by otherwise sane women as irresistibly sexy. So a sniff on his part, he says, was in order. His final sentence is it turns out to be a nice dry citrus fruity with an impressive ability to radiate a warm spicy aura all around good stuff i agree it's a great fragrance and i think yeah four out of five sort of 80 percent eight out of ten for me too really nice fragrance of course we've heard a lot about that one so let's leave it there moving on it's one of turin's real favorites of all time it's a new york intense from nikolai used to, i think they used to be called parfums de nikolai so uh, this one is a revamped version of the 1989 release new york according to turin that was reformulated and lost a lot of its glory so he's really happy that the new version new york intense from 2014 has recaptured that glory the notes on this one are uh, petit grain bergamot lemon thyme and artemisia in the top in the mid you've got black pepper clove cinnamon lavender chamomile and in the base oak moss vanilla styrax incense musk civet and castorium despite all those notes which are quite different to the one i'm going to mention now it's very often compared to bois de portugal by Creed, both this version and the original are compared. It has that lovely combination that that one also has of a nice bergamot lemony green opening and a real sort of spicy, dusty, woody undertone to it. I'm surprised to see musk, civet and castorium, which you would think would be quite gnarly, animalic, risky notes, because I don't smell that it comes off that way very much, but it does have a real old school masculine feel, perhaps some patchouli in there as well, and it reminds me a little bit also of Guerlain's Heritage. Let's see what Mr. Turin says about it briefly. So, uh, what's it called? New York, time to remember my ABCs. Um, New York Intense is a five star review. His little two word line is powdery biscuit, and uh, he says that, um, uh, referring to the fact that they've saved it from the, the weaker reformulated original versions uh, failings, now owing to who knows what brilliant alchemy, New York has circumvented all the petty fogging and comes roaring back in full glory with its unique combination of bracing bitter orange, cosseting petty boer and dreamy lavender. I doubt very much that there is at this point a better masculine fragrance out there. So really high praise indeed. Check this one out if you can. Very reasonably very reasonably priced for a niche fragrance. I've got a 30 mil, which is a great thing that you can get that smaller size and spend a really uh, not too outrageous amount to get that. And I think there's a 100 mil as well, much cheaper than a Creed price. And it's certainly in his opinion, I think he thinks it's better than Bois de Portugal. So moving on, what's next? This one, another real shock. I didn't think he would review this. If he did, I thought he'd be dismissive and say routine woody citrus or something like that, but he really likes Aqua Amara from Bulgari gets four stars. So this one has notes in it of uh, that we've got mandarin, neroli, patchouli, and frankincense, according to base notes. Jacques Cavalier, the perfumer, and it was a 2014 release. He compares it favorably to uh, La Rouche's Horizon from 1993 and Dolce & Gabbana's, apparently, according to him, appalling light blue, which uh, I guess are both sort of attempted citrusy aquatic fragrances. So in praising this fragrance, he's really quite generous. Let's check out what he says. Uh, he says, Aqua Amara plays the woody citrus accord in minor mode, makes a lemon so dry that no one will think of eau de cologne, adds a complex cluster of abstract watery notes that go on forever and turns the volume right down. Clever, interesting, and subtle especially when sprayed on fabric so uh, he says it goes on forever I think maybe the subtle isn't necessarily uh, referring to the performance but maybe the way that the actual fragrance is composed is a little bit subtle and clever uh, but uh, certainly performance and longevity and siage on me are really good on this one and I wore this with Claire from the Smur Smurfy Girly channel the other day she was really impressed uh, at how well it performed and she said it smelled really really good so Aqua Amara from Bulgari surprise for me because I, I thought it would be the kind of thing he wouldn't find that uh, challenging or interesting or innovative but he really likes it so do I so if you're looking for a nice fresh citrusy fragrance great value as well you can find a link in the description to buy that one on Amazon in the USA and the UK moving on then that's nearly it isn't it so the last one is going to be Nightingale from Zoologist 
back to the niche world now. So Nightingale from Zoologist was released in 2016. The creative director there is the wonderful Victor Wong. They have a whole series of fragrances with fantastic pictures on the bottles. I've just got a travel spray of this one uh, of the animals in question, including things like bat, badger, hummingbird, rhinoceros, all kinds of uh, things, macaque, the monkey, uh, there's, there's a load of them out there now. This is one of the more wearable and um, perhaps the least weird smelling ones uh, and they're all really good but this is one that you can wear a little bit more comfortably than some of the others. Perfumia is Tomo Anaba and it's described in the book with the two word thing woody floral. Notes include bergamot and lemon, there's plum blossom, rose, there's a bit of oud apparently, don't smell it much, sandalwood, frankincense, all kinds of stuff for this one. Um, so for me it's a really really sweet floral woody scent with a little bit of exoticism maybe coming from the incense. It leans slightly more feminine than masculine and it reminds me of classic fragrances for women that were created in the 50s and 60s to some extent but it has that modern niche magic about it too. Victor, sorry, not Victor Wong, uh, Luca Turin clearly agrees that it's a good one and gives it four stars. It's quite a long one, so I'll just give you the highlights. Um, he's, he really kind of goes on about the brand a bit at the beginning. He uh, does praise the superb bottles, wonderful label engravings and exquisite typography and the wry humour of the brand. And uh, he, he uh, says that it apparently draws inspiration from a 13th century poem written to impress the Empress of Japan. So that's an interesting little bit of information. And at the end, he says it's a sustained, transparent contrast between muted fresh flowers and dusty dry woods is what Nightingale is all about. Nice work. And Mr. Smelly says nice work too. Great fragrance, really, really nice beast mode performance. I think it's an extract, a parfum type of strength. The color of that juice, the kind of pinkness, gives you a little bit of an idea of how it smells. It is quite floral, sort of feminine, but a brave perfumista man can pull this one off, no problem. But just a couple of spray sprays, it really is beast mode. So those were five that Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez really liked. Shall I do a video on ones they disliked? I think that would be fun, uh, maybe from just this book or maybe both books that they uh, released. I think, uh, yeah, it could be really fun to do a really bad review video and to show you some fragrances that I love that they dislike. Let me know what you think about that idea and about this video. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.